I've always had a different perception of music, very different than classical music theory. One of my earliest recollections of that difference, I was around age 10 in grade school. I had raised my hand and I asked the teacher why the note on the piano sounded so yellow. Well, the teacher didn't really understand the question. Uh, she's a bit annoyed with me. Today is very different though. Today, the sciences of perception are thriving and different forms of audio and visual media are converging. So perhaps today that question could have drawn curiosity instead. I found out years later that I have synesthesia. It's a condition where the senses are partially combined and it's common to see color, shape, and form when listening to music. In my adult life, I chose to act on this quality because I always suspected that there were universally visual properties contained within music. Visual properties that everyone can perceive to some degree. After all, music is an anomaly. It can draw a highly emotional response from all of us, and yet there's nothing tangible in it, like in a painting or in a photograph. So what does music actually mean? And in an increasingly visual world, is just hearing music still enough? What if we could also see music? So I've made some animations for today, and I've used the same simulations to produce both the visuals as well as the sound. And through these animations, I like to convey how the same principles of design can exist simultaneously, simultaneously in graphics as well as in music. First, size and distance. For many, this first diagram might be obvious. I see size and distance as a basis that's incredibly common in both graphics as well as sound. If things are close to us, or larger, or if they make forceful impacts, they'll be louder. And if they're far away from us, or small, or if they make light impacts, they'll be softer. Here, observe all three properties working in unison. Let's get a touch more abstract. The next animation will demonstrate musical location. Instead of depth, think of a flat visual canvas, like in a painting. Up and down will correspond to the higher and lower pitch of the note, and left to right will correspond to our left and right, like which ear we hear it from. Next, the concept of weight. There are strong similarities to how graphic design and music approach weight. To portray a heavy weight, large, low, dim, often slow-moving elements are used, and to portray a lighter weight, high, bright, often more frequent elements are used. Here, observe weight working in the visual sense, and at the same time, in the musical sense. Note progressions, or the flow of notes, is a fascinating aspect of music. Musicians often describe major and minor note progressions as light and dark. Now let's compare that to lighting on a film. A scary movie would be lit with long, dark shadows, or nighttime lighting. A kid's TV show would be completely different. It would use warm, bright light and soft shadows, or daytime lighting. And let's observe the direct relationship between lighting and note progressions.
try to use the piano when I can because the sound is so recognizable. But for the next two animations, I've used direct sound synthesis to show an even closer relationship between graphics and sound. Let's have a look at how color temperature can exhibit the same properties as musical timbre. Here, you might notice how the blue sounds different than the red. That's the timbre. As the color temperature increases, it goes from blue to red. And we can also use temperature to describe musical timbre. A cool timbre would have low distortion sound waves like a flute, and a warm timbre would have high distortion sound waves like a violin. For the last animation, I'd like to discuss an incredibly foundational aspect of music, repetition. Patterns of notes, triplets or notes in pairs of four or five. Graphic design has an equivalent that everybody knows about. It's the shape. Triangles, squares, circles, and we learn about shapes before we learn how to walk. I found that musical pitch and repetition structure fit seamlessly into the most basic shape patterns. As these animations illustrate, there's more to music than abstract patterns and tones, and that the visual and musical components of our minds aren't really so different. So as our perceptions of music continue to evolve in an increasingly visual world, visual music theory will allow us to use our sight to better understand music. <laughs>